we see a, a, a consistent effort um, to control the historical narrative, one that has not diminished with time, but is actually almost picked up with time. And arguably, after the Cultural Revolution, there was a bit of an effort made at a reckoning with what had, ha what had happened in the Cultural Revolution um, in the early 1980s. Some amends were made, some people got to see their files or court cases, and this is how some of this information got released. Uh, but especially in the past decade or so, there's been uh, a very, very strong effort to control history. These people, you know, their story could have just died and we never would have heard of anything like Spark, except that after the Cultural Revolution, some of the people got to look into their files. They saw this and they photographed it. They, they photographed the magazine. Um, and then with time, slowly, this began to spread. Uh, people, and then especially, again, this is where the digital technologies kick in, especially with the advent of PDFs and the internet, people then made PDFs of the magazine, they put it online, and, and you can now easily find the complete, uh, the two volumes, not complete, the complete works, but it's not, it's not that much. Um, it's just several tens of thousands of characters, maybe 20,000 characters total. But this is, for many people, this many public intellectuals in China today, this magazine was quite influential because, or still remains influential because as the, um, uh, this Chinese film scholar put it, she said, um, after reading this, I realized these are our ancestors. These are our forefathers. These are the people who were struggling with the same questions that we have today. They were struggling with them uh, 60 years ago. Much of this history was lost in the Cultural Revolution. These groups reconstituted themselves after the Cultural Revolution um, and, and collected old photos um, of, when, of when they were reconstituted and, got, and had oral histories made of the, of, of the old people who were still alive. These oral histories, were, again, have been made just in the past few years and have been all collected in their own private archive. And these archives, and these people are not interested in directly challenging the Communist Party in any way. This isn't a, a movement of dissent, but these, these oral histories describe in excruciating detail what happened in the Great Leap Forward, what happened in the Cultural Revolution, how people were humiliated, how people were killed. They were just, these are just ordinary people. You know, don't, they don't have a high educational level at all. We're talking about middle school at best, just telling their stories and writing this down. 